Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are once more for like the fifth day in a row taking a look at the tropics where we have three upcoming potential systems and now two tropical storms. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that either of these three systems will become our first hurricane this year for the Atlantic? Let me know in the comments down below, give me a reason why, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video and we're taking a look here at our two day graphical tropical weather outlook. As you can see, we have tropical storm Gonzalo still obviously, and also Tropical Storm Hannah now in the Gulf. Yesterday we said there's a pretty good chance this one would become a tropical storm, and that has gone ahead and happened. Gonzalo has interacted with some dry air and some shear and has really taken a hit. We mentioned that yesterday as well. Uh, hurricane status remains a question mark for Gonzalo. Will it become a hurricane or will it not? That's kind of the biggest question in the tropics right now. Also, you can see that we do have a third system offshore of Africa there, which surprisingly, actually, I would say has the most potential out of all three of the systems here. Let me know if you agree, though, down in the comments down below. Let's go ahead and move on to the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Uh, also, I want to mention that within the next two days, that first or that third system has a 0% chance of developing. So we have Hannah Gonzalo. And then we have our third system here, which actually I think has about a 30% chance of developing over the next five days. So we're going to need to really watch that one closely and you can expect many more uploads on the tropics coming up very soon. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the national hurricane centers forecast for Gonzalo and Hannah. We're going to take a look at some satellite imagery and some model guidance as well. All right, now first things first, we're taking a look at Gonzalo here. Again, we had a lot of H's on the screen here as of yesterday. Now we do not. We have one there uh, for 2 p.m. on Saturday, which is tomorrow from the time I'm making this video. Though, personally, I'm becoming doubtful that this will even cross into hurricane status. I'm going to talk a lot about that coming up. Uh, but then it will lower, according to the National Hurricane Center, into tropical storm status once more as it enters the southern Caribbean there, that's where a lot of question marks come up and really the future of it becomes a lot more uncertain. Here's the satellite image, imagery of our tropical storm Gonzalo as of right now. As you can see, it's still not looking perfect, but it's looking a lot better than it did yesterday. I will give it that. It's not allowing as much dry air to get in. So if it's going to develop further and possibly become a hurricane, it's needing to do it very soon because the window is really, really closing up here uh, very quickly. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Tropical Storm Hannah, which is now expected to interact with the southern coast of Texas there, move inland and then potentially move further south as it will become a tropical depression and weaken quite further as it moves into Mexico. All right, now here is the satellite imagery of Hannah and Hannah actually looks a lot better than uh, Gonzalo at this point, though Hannah is a little tiny bit weaker than Gonzalo, I will say, uh, but outside of that, I think Hannah's future is a little bit brighter than Gonzalo, though there's a lot more question marks with Gonzalo, I will say that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the spaghetti model guidance for both of these storms, the intensity guidance for both of these storms, and then we're going to move on and talk about our third tropical wave, and then we're going to start talking about the impacts that Hannah could have on Texas. All right, now here we are taking a look at our spaghetti models here, first off for Gonzalo. And as you can see, it looks pretty much like it has in, in previous days. Really, we're expecting it to move through the Southern Caribbean, though it's possible that it interacts with either Cuba, potentially Haiti, and Dominican Republic. It could hit as far uh, northward as Texas, but it could go as far south as hitting the Yucatan Peninsula there in Mexico. Either way, it is heading towards the Gulf, it appears, potentially the East Coast, but really the Gulf appears much more likely as most of the time it does with these Southern Caribbean storms. That's really going to raise a lot of question marks for the future of this one, even though we're expecting a lot of uh, this storm to really dissipate over the Southern Caribbean, it is possible that it will move into the Gulf and then do something else. But again, that's just a question mark that we're going to need to answer later on as we don't really have the answers, you know, seven days plus out. Here's Hannah's uh, spaghetti models, which are actually surprisingly wide at this point for how early on we are expecting this storm to hit to hit Texas. 48 hours out, there's a large uh, area that this one could really hit, but I'm almost certain that those ones, the big group of spaghetti models there that have it going further south are correct. I do not think it's going to continue to head northwestward like some of these other three models are showing. 
All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at that intensity guidance for both of these storms, and then we're going to move on and again talk about that new tropical wave heading off of Africa, which could be the biggest of the three. And then we're going to talk about all the impacts for Texas as far as wind and rainfall from Tropical Storm Hannah. And then we're going to get into our official direct weather Tropical Storm Gonzalo forecast and Tropical Storm Hannah forecast. All of that coming up shortly. All right, now, first things first, here we are taking a look at our intensity guidance for Gonzalo. And as you can see, there is very few models that show us heading into to hurricane status at this point. Uh, a lot of these models were showing it hit category one status or even category two status. But this storm has weakened over the past 24 hours, uh, as I kind of saw coming based on satellite imagery. Uh, and this storm has been pretty unpredictable to this point. And really, I do not expect it to hit uh, hurricane status at this point. I would say there's about a 30 to 40% chance of hurricane status, uh, but the rest of the probability is it's staying below tropical storm status at least throughout the next five days or so, where the question marks kind of rise up after that point. Obviously, like I said, as it moves through the Southern Caribbean and into the Gulf, it could do some other things that we can't really foresee at this moment, but that's going to need to be talked about on a later date. Here's tropical storm Hannah, though. Uh, and we do expect this one to actually intensify quite a bit over the next 24 hours into a moderate to strong tropical storm. And then, as you can see, within the next 48 hours, it hits land. And then it dramatically weakens from that point, as we do see commonly with tropical systems when they do interact with land. Uh, so we are expecting this one to, again, weaken quite dramatically over the next, well, after the next 48 hours, I would say. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about that third tropical system here. Here's some satellite imagery off the coast of Africa there. You can see there is some very organized areas of thunderstorms. And over the next, well, after the next 48 hours, I do expect this one could begin to develop towards tropical depression status, even tropical storm status, and then eventually possibly hurricane status. It all depends on how this one interacts with dry air, the shear. These are all things that we're going to need to work out in a later date. Obviously, I will be making many, many more up uploads for this individual system. So rest assured, we will have many updates. Though here is our European model's probability of tropical depression for the next two to five days, again, after the next 48 hours. So the 26th of July through the 29th of July, it has an 80 to 90% chance within more of those red shades there of this one becoming a tropical depression. Uh, and then here's tropical storm status for the days five through eight, which is the 29th through the 1st of August. And it has about a 30 to 40% chance of this one reaching tropical storm status later on in this storm's life. So we're really going to need to watch this one closely. As a bonus, here is the probability of hurricane status. And over the next seven to 10 days, which is the 31st through the 3rd of August, this one does have a small area of 10 to 20% chance of hurricane status here over the Bahamas. Obviously, the location is very uncertain at this point, but it is interesting to see that this model has hopped on board with this one developing quite far. Though, take this information with a grain of salt because this model is certainly not perfect, and I've actually touched on that uh, in previous videos recently. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to talk about the impacts to Texas from Tropical Storm Hannah, and then we're going to get into our official direct weather forecast for both of our tropical storms. All right, now here's a single frame here of our uh, our wind gusts in mile per hours. This is going to be for Saturday at about 3 p.m., which again is going to be tomorrow. As you can see, this, this model, which is our European model, is expecting 60 to 70 mile per hour gusts here in the reds. And more of those brown shades is where it's indicating 70 miles per hour plus. So for a pretty small area, this storm is going to be pretty impactful as far as winds. Obviously, we know 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts is enough to do some pretty major damage in some spotty locations. So we're really going to want to be on the lookout for some potential moderate to major impacts uh, as far as wind actually, especially if this one climbs uh, into more of a moderate to strong tropical storm status. These are all things we're going to need to watch very closely. And this is what we call the accumulated maximum wind gust uh, in miles per hour. And really, this is just the entire model runs maximum wind gusts at any point. So we can see there is a lot of browns that show up. This means that there is uh, at some point, 70 mile per hour winds expected. So this is the maximum winds expected at any given point throughout the entire model run. So you can see throughout that southern portion of Texas there and in through Mexico, we do expect the potential in those brown shades for 70 to maybe 80, maybe a little bit above 80 mile per hour wind gusts. So again, we're really going to need to watch this one closely. Uh, and here's that total rainfall forecast. 
Uh, so in the reds, we're expecting, well, the oranges to reds, we're expecting anywhere from an inch to about five inches of rain throughout those reds. So pretty much most of the coast of Texas there, if not all of it, and even in through Mexico, if you're below the yellow, so for the, the blues, the greens, and the grays, you're anywhere under an inch of rain, which we would call minor amounts of wind. So I'm not, or minor amounts of rainfall. So I'm not really going to touch on that. The browns is anywhere from five to 10 inches of rain. And you can even see a bit of blues. That's where we're at 10 inches plus of rain. So this one could be a pretty major wind, or sorry, rainmaker. And I do expect there is potential for major flooding as well uh, in some spotty locations, wherever the brunt of this storm hits, which we're trying to fine tune at this point. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at our official forecast for these storms, the cone forecast that is. Here's Tropical Storm Gonzalo. It's at 10 degrees north by 52.8 degrees west. It has 51 mile per hour winds, which is downgraded since yesterday. It also has a 1,002 millibar low pressure center, which is again downgraded since yesterday. But it is racing westward uh, at about 15 miles per hour. So this one is going very fast. And you can see our cone is a seven day forecast, so it goes out pretty far. Uh, but that cone becomes very wide, and a lot of options are on the table at this point for the later dates for this one. Now, here's Tropical Storm Hannah. It's at 27.1 degrees north by 92.8 degrees west. It has 45 mile per hour wind, so it's pretty close to Gonzalo, actually. And it has a 1,001 millibar low pressure center, which is actually lower than Gonzalo. So this one is pretty much rivaling Gonzalo at this point. It is moving west at 9 miles per hour. The slower this one goes, the more it's going to be able to, to, to develop. So that's going to be another important thing we have to watch. As you can see, we do have a pretty fine-tuned cone there for this one, though. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think is going to happen with that third invest we're watching off the coast of Africa? And Mid-Atlantic Weather said, I believe the third invest has the potential to turn into a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane. That is very bold, but I like bold. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.